Over the next several videos, I'm going to show you how to create a custom theme for Rad Scheduler with Visual Style Builder. We'll begin in this video by taking a look at some of the components that make up Rad Scheduler. We'll follow this by creating a custom theme for one of those components, the Rad Scroll Bar. Finally, we'll test our newly created theme in an actual application. Let's get started. So as you can see, I already have a copy of Visual Style Builder open. And Visual Style Builder is actually a tool that is included with the RAD controls for WinForms that allows you to create your own custom themes for the controls that you can use in your applications. So as you can see here to the left, I have a control structure view that lists all of the available RAD controls. And if I want to edit a RAD control, I can just expand into it, select one of its elements, and that will break it down further into all of the elements and primitives that make up that particular element of the control. And then to actually apply a style, I can select an element, let's say the button fill, for example, for the rad button. And then I can also select an element state. And the rad button contains a default state, a mouse over state for when my mouse is hovering over it, and a mouse down state for when I've clicked on the button. And to actually create a repository item, I can click the Create New Repository Item button. And I'm going to create a fill repository. And let's just go with one of the quick themes. We'll go with green, and I'll click OK. And now to apply this repository, I can actually just simply drag and drop it to one of the uh, several available states. And in this case, I've chosen the mouse over state. So now when I mouse over the button, it's going to turn green. And so that's basically how Visual Style Builder works in a nutshell. It just allows me to go through all of these controls, create repositories, and apply custom themes to the various controls. So we're not actually going to be creating a theme for Rad Button today, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this repository. Let's switch on over to Rad Scheduler, which is the control that we're going to begin creating a theme for. I'm going to switch to Design View real quick, and let's resize this so it's a little bit more manageable to work with. And as you can see, it's currently in its uh, default style. When no style has been applied to a rad control, it actually uh, comes out as this kind of grayish color. Uh, and to begin styling it, I could go the route of just creating repositories from scratch, as you saw me do before. But that would actually entail quite a bit of work. And I really only recommend that you do that if you're like a power user of Visual Style Builder and want to you know, go really far in depth in creating your theme. Uh, for the rest of us that want to take a little bit of an easier route in creating a custom theme, uh, there's another path I recommend. And that is to start from one of the uh, built-in Telerik themes. So I'm going to go ahead and export those right now. So I'll go up to File. And I'm going to select to Export Built-in Themes. And I'm going to browse to my video folder where I will be placing them. So that'll be in my C drive, and then in my Visual Style Builder video folder. And I'm going to create a new folder called Telerik Themes. And I'll click OK to output those there. And now to open those, I'm just going to go to File, Open Package. And as you can see, here are all of the theme packages that were output. And I'm going to start building my Rad Scheduler theme from the Control Default theme. So I'll select that and click Open. I'm just going to take a second to load that theme up. And as you can see, now that it's loaded, I actually have several various repositories that have been applied already throughout the entire control set. And in order to create my own custom theme, I can actually just come through all of these repositories and modify them, modify their colors, and it will automatically reflect them throughout the various controls. So now that we have our uh, base theme loaded, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the components of Rad Scheduler. So as you can see, I'm currently inside of the Rad Scheduler control, and this control, uh, like the Rad button, is actually built up of a hierarchy of different elements and primitives that make up those elements. If we look to the right, as you can see, this control contains a scroll bar. Well, the scroll bar is actually not an, a, a sub-element of Rad Scheduler. It's actually a completely separate control. So if we wanted to theme this scroll bar, we would actually have to come over here to the scroll bar, the Rad scroll bar control, and theme that separately. And once we do that, that will be reflected here in Rad Scheduler. Uh, another thing I want to show you is if I select an area of Rad Scheduler and go to New Appointment, as you can see, a dialog has popped up, the Edit Appointment dialog. 
and this dialog is actually on a RAD form and it contains a various array of RAD text boxes, drop downs, and different control boxes. Well if we want these to reflect the theme that we're creating, we're going to need to create themes for these controls as well. So we'll have to jump through the control structure and create separate themes for all of these controls. So to get started today, we're not actually going to begin by theming RAD Scheduler. We're going to start with the uh, simplest part of this whole process, and we're going to theme the RAD scroll bar. So I'm going to minimize the RAD Scheduler section, and let's switch on to the RAD scroll bar. So the first thing I want to modify on RAD scroll bar is going to be this fill color, as you can see here in the background. It's kind of a, a light blue color. Let's go ahead and switch this to more of a grayish color. We're going to build kind of a, a gray black Office 2010 black style theme. So to begin modifying that I'm actually going to switch over to rad scroll bar element and as you can see this element is built up of these various uh, sub elements and the element I'm going to modify to change that will be the scroll bar pressed fill. So I'm going to select that and then the state I want to modify is going to be its default state just the rad scroll bar element state and then finally, to see the repositories that have already been applied to this, I can just click this checkbox, and we can see that scroll bar fill has been applied to this. So I don't actually need to create a new repository this time around. I can actually just come in and edit the currently applied repository. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's jump into this, and let's change its background color to kind of a darker gray color. And I'll click OK. And uh, you probably noticed that I actually have a text file open here to the right called colors.txt. Well, when I'm creating themes, I like to keep track of the various colors that I'm using so I can reuse them as I modify uh, different controls. And this just makes it possible to uh, create an overall more consistent theme more easily. So I'm going to log the colors as I uh, apply them to my controls. So let's set this to the background color and it's going to be that grayscale color that I just copied right out of my uh, scroll bar background. So I'll click OK. And as you can see, uh, that gray color has been applied to our scroll bar, uh, but as you can see here, the left and top edges of these two scroll bars is actually still kind of a light blue color. Well, we need to change that as well so it fits in more with our theme. So to change that, I'm actually just going to come down here to my scroll bar border primitive. We'll select that and we'll leave it on the default state and as you can see it has a repository that's been applied for this. Well if we open this repository up as you can see it is actually creating that blue border that we see. So let's go ahead and switch this to be just a black border all the way around. So I'm going to change the box style of this border to be a single border and then we'll just change the four color to be black. So I'm going to select a black color and click OK and I'll click OK again and as you can see the black border has been applied around both of these scroll bars. So now that we've taken care of that, let's go ahead and modify these buttons that appear on the left and right sides of the scroll bars. So to begin modifying those, I'm actually going to switch over to scroll bar first button and let's modify the fill by selecting the scroll bar button fill. And as you can see no repository has been really applied to the, the default state. Well, I guess a transparent repository has been applied to the default state. That's why you kind of see the background color of the scroll bar flood into that button. But when I hover over the button, it's actually applying the mouse over state, which is this state right here. So this is the one we're going to be modifying. So let's go ahead and jump into that. And I'm going to switch it to kind of a lighter gray color. And as you can see, it's actually uh, applied as a gradient, so we're going to need to modify these various four background colors. So I'm going to jump into the first one, and let's kind of change that to lighter gray color. Click OK. And then the next one, the kind of the center area, will be a little bit, a little bit darker, not too much. Actually, let's go with a little bit of a lighter, lighter gray so it blends better. And now that I have those two, I'm just actually just going to copy and paste them uh, so that I have a consistent look across my entire gradient. And I'm going to save these out to my text file as well. So uh, let's go ahead and log the border color that I did last time. And that was just black, so it's going to be 000. And then for this gray gradient, this is going to be my mouse over uh, gradient. So we'll just call that mouse over fill. I'm going to paste in the first color, and then I'll paste in the second color. 
And I'm going to be creating gradients uh, pretty much in this style throughout my application, so I really am only going to log these two colors. If I wanted to, I could actually click on this section right here and add uh, more gradient transitions throughout the entire gradient and create a completely different effect. But I'm just going to leave it this way. So I'll click OK now. And as you can see, when I hover over it, it now changes to that gray color instead of to the blue color that it was changing to before. Uh, but this time, once again, as you can see, the border is creating an inconsistent feel for my theme. So we need to go ahead and change the border for this button as well. So I'm going to select the scroll bar button border primitive. And as you can see, it contains no state for its default state. Uh, but I'm going to modify the repository that has been applied for the mouse over state instead. So let's go ahead and open up that repository. And as you can see, the box style is an outer inner border, and that basically means that it's using both of these colors. The inner color is what's displayed on the inside of the border, and the outer color this is this blue color, and that's displayed on the outside of the border. So I'm going to modify the outer color to be black. So let's jump into this border. I'm just going to switch all four of these borders to be a black color. And then for the inner color, I'm going to go with a gray color. So let's jump into the uh, color selection dialog. And I'm going to select a kind of a darker gray color. And let's go ahead and copy and paste that into the rest of the inner color borders. And I'm going to uh, add this to my text file as well. So we'll say that this is an inner border. So now that I've done that, I'm going to click OK. Now, as you can see, when I hover over this button, it now has the correct border and the fill looks nice as well. Now, the final thing I want to do with this is, as you can see, when I click on this, it still turns blue. Well, that means there's one more state that I need to modify. So I'm going to switch back to my fill element. And as you can see, there's a pressed state. So let's go ahead and modify that. So I'm going to select that, and we'll jump into the editor for this. And I'm just going to switch this to kind of a darker color gradient. So let's go with a like a darker gray. And then for the inner, inner gray of our gradient, we'll go with an even darker one. And now that I've done that, let's just copy and paste these to fill out the rest of our gradient. And I'm going to paste these in my color file as well. And this is going to be my mouse down fill. So that'll be my outer color. And this will be the inner color. I'll click OK. And when I hover over this now, it still turns that gray color it was turning before. But when I click on it, it turns a darker color to know that I've actually pressed this button. So now that we've taken care of this, there's actually one more thing that we need to take a look at. And that's this, uh, this thumb button right here. So to modify that, I actually need to switch down to scroll bar thumb. And I can edit its various element states. So let's start by modifying its fill state. So I'm going to select fill. And as you can see, its fill state is currently this blue color. So let's go ahead and jump into the editor for this. And we'll change it to kind of a lighter gray color. So I'm going to switch this to a light gray. And then the center of this gradient will get a little bit darker. And then let's copy the darker gradient into the center again. And then the lighter gradient can go back on the outer portion. And I'm going to just set this in my colors file as just a a uh, regular fill. Uh, let's copy these values and paste them into my text file. And now I'll click OK. And as you can see that fill has been applied to my thumb button. Well the rest of the steps that you need to take for this are actually pretty much the same as you saw for this button right here. I just need to modify the border and then if I want to modify what happens when it's clicked I can modify the mouse over and the press states of it as well. So now that you know a little bit about creating your own theme, uh, I'm actually going to just transition past the rest of the theme creation process uh, to my final completed theme. Once there, we'll take a look at how we can test this theme in an actual application so that we can make sure it fits the overall look and feel that we're going for. So this is the completed rad scroll bar theme. I've applied styles to all of the various buttons and components that make up this control uh, so that I have a nice grayscale type theme. And if we jump back over to rad scheduler now that we've created this, as you can see, the scroll bar inside of rad scheduler 
is actually that rad scroll bar control, so it gets applied here where the rad scheduler needs a scroll bar. So now that we've completed our rad scroll bar theme, let's test this inside of an actual rad controls application. To begin doing that, I first need to save my theme out into a package file. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and let's browse to the location I want to save it to, and that's going to be in my Visual Style Builder video folder. And I'm going to make a new folder called Custom Themes. And I'll select OK. And let's call this the Smoke Theme, since it's kind of a smoky grayish theme. And I'll click OK. And it's going to save that out. And if we jump on over to my file system, to my custom themes folder, here we can see that the smoke theme has been saved out. So now that we have that, I actually want to use that inside of an application. So I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio. And as you can see, I've already created a basic test application that contains the RAD scheduler, the RAD scheduler navigator. And if we look to the right, here is the RAD scroll bar that we have just modified and created a theme for. So to begin using our theme in this application, I'm actually just going to drag it from my file system straight into my project. And we need to make sure to change the build action for this to be an embedded resource. So now that we've done that, I'm going to jump into the form load event and we'll type some code. So to apply our theme to the application, all I need to do is say theme resolution service dot load package resource and I'm going to specify the location of my resource file and that's going to be test application dot smoke theme dot tssp so now that I've loaded the package resource I can now apply my theme to the overall application so I'm going to say theme resolution service once again and then we'll say application theme name and this is where we pass in the name of our theme which is smoke theme so now that that's done, I'm just going to click Run, and let's take a look at our newly created theme and our application. So here is Rad Scheduler with Rad Scheduler Navigator at the top. But as you can see, here to the right, since we've applied our new Rad Scroll Bar theme to the application, it's getting applied to the scroll bar contained within Rad Scheduler. So that's basically all it takes to begin creating a theme for Rad Scheduler. We've started out by creating a theme for Rad Scroll Bar, but in the next video, we're actually going to start creating a theme for the Rad Scheduler itself. I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for watching.